David Copperfield, in full the personal history of David Copperfield, novel by English writer Charles Dickens, published serially in 1849-50 and in book form in 1850. David Copperfield has always been among Dickens's most popular novels and was his own favorite child. The work is semi-autobiographical, and, although the title character differs from his creator in many ways, Dickens related early personal experiences that had meant much to him, his work in a factory, his schooling and reading, and, more cursorily, his emergence from parliamentary reporting into successful novel writing. The story is told in the first person by a middle-aged David Copperfield, who is looking back on his life. David is born in Blunderstone, Suffolk, six months after the death of his father, and he is raised by his mother and her devoted housekeeper, Clara Peggotty. As a young child, he spends a few days with Peggotty at the home of her brother, Mr. Peggotty, in Yarmouth, which Mr. Peggotty shares with Ham and Emily, his orphan nephew and niece, respectively. When the visit ends, David learns that his mother has married the cruel and controlling Mr. Edward Murdstone. That evening Murdstone's sister also moves in and assumes the management of the household. One day Mr. Murdstone takes David to his bedroom to beat him, and David bites his hand. After that, the eight-year-old David is sent to a boarding school run by the sadistic Mr. Creakle. There David becomes friends with the kind and steadfast Tommy Traddles and with the charismatic and entitled James Steerforth. Partway through David's second semester at the school, his mother dies shortly after giving birth to a son, who also perishes. After that, Peggotty is dismissed, and she marries Burkiss, who drives a wagon. David is not returned to school, and at the age of 10 he is sent to work at Murdstone's wine bottling factory in London. He lodges at the home of Mr. and Mrs. Micawber, a generous couple who are constantly facing financial disaster. Eventually, Mr. Micawber is sent to debtor's prison, after which David runs away to Dover to find his great-aunt, the self-sufficient Miss Betsy Trotwood, and, on the advice of her simple-minded and good-hearted boarder, Mr. Dick, she takes him in. Miss Betsy arranges for David to go to a school run by Dr. Strong and to stay with her business manager, Mr. Wickfield, and his daughter, Agnes. Working for Mr. Wickfield is an off-putting teenaged clerk named Uriah Heap. After David completes his schooling, he goes to visit Peggotty. On the way to Yarmouth, David encounters Steerforth, and together they visit Peggotty and Mr. Peggotty. Emily's engagement to Ham is announced, but she appears interested in Steerforth. After agreeing to Miss Betsy's idea that he should become a proctor, a type of attorney, David begins an apprenticeship at the London office of Spenlow and Jorkins. He maintains his friendship with Steerforth, though Agnes Wickfield disapproves. He is reacquainted with Uriah Heep, who is about to become Wickfield's partner and who intends to marry Agnes. One day Spenlow invites David to his home, and David becomes infatuated with Spenlow's childlike daughter, Dora. David finds that Traddles is now a boarder with Mr. and Mrs. Micawber. Upon learning that Burkiss is on the point of death, he returns to Yarmouth. After Burkiss's funeral, Emily runs away with Steerforth, and Mr. Peggotty vows to find her. David returns to London and becomes engaged to Dora. Miss Betsy unexpectedly arrives with the news that she has been financially ruined as a result of Uriah Heap's partnership with Wickfield. To add to his income, David begins working for Dr. Strong as a secretary, and at Traddles's suggestion he starts reporting on parliamentary debates for newspapers, later he also writes fiction. Uriah Heep hires Mr. Micawber as a clerk. Eventually, David marries Dora. After she suffers a miscarriage, she never regains her strength and she dies. During this time Emily returns to London after being abandoned in Naples by Steerforth. One day Mr. Micawber, in concert with David and Traddles, who is now a lawyer, confronts Uriah Heep with detailed evidence that he has been cheating Wickfield and was responsible for Miss Betsy's losses, Heep is required to return the money. Plans are then made for Mr. and Mrs. Micawber to join Mr. Peggotty and Emily when they immigrate to Australia to make a fresh start. Ahead of the departure, David goes to Yarmouth to deliver a letter from Emily to Ham, but a dangerous storm arises. 
Several ships are lost, and one shipwreck occurs close enough to shore that Ham tries to swim out and save the last two survivors. Ham drowns, and, when the body of one of the sailors is washed ashore, it proves to be Steerforth. David spends the next three years in continental Europe, and, when he returns, he marries Agnes. David Copperfield is a complex investigation of psychological development that makes it Freud's favorite. The novel flourishes in the merging elements of a fairy tale with the open-ended maturation process of the protagonist. The novels display the idea of a fatherless child whose tranquil childhood is disturbed by the masculine control of his stepfather. The novel deals with the suffering that David encounters in his early part of the life, then his matrimonial relationship with a child wife, Dora, his postulations of identity as mature middle class, he is learning to train an undisciplined heart. The story suggests the deed of reminiscence while exploring the nature of remembrance itself. David's growth is established alongside other fatherless childs, whereas the retributive Mr. Murdstone is counter-postured to the lively and exciting Mr. Micawber. Charles Dickens in his novel, David Copperfield, explores the uncertainties and worries that revolve around class and gender. The particular events of seduction in the novel evidence of this fact. For instance, the seduction of Emily by Steerforth and the strategies on the pious Agnes by Uriah Heep along with David's attraction towards childlike sexuality of Dora and at the end the house-trained reasonableness of Agnes in his own expedition for a family. There are two messages that run throughout the book in relation to this idea. The first, seen through the changing circumstances and moods in David's life, is that an individual's happiness can be greatly affected by circumstances. The most obvious change in relation to this occurs when David runs away from his factory job and is taken in by his aunt. Uriah Heep also acts as a negative factor in the Wickfield's life, almost entirely destroying Mr. Wickfield's health and peace of mind. But there is another thread that the book teaches, which is that a person can achieve contentment and even joy without perfect circumstances. Traddles and Sophie in their early days are a perfect example of this. When money was still tight, they contented themselves with simple pleasures, such as window shopping, half-price theater tickets, or sitting by the fire together. The key was that they made the most of what they had and enjoyed it. The other great example is Mr. Omer, who found great joy and excitement even in a wheelchair, which had many advantages, though he had lost the use of his limbs. In fact, Mr. Omer gives the most obvious verbal expression of this idea. A related theme is the power of pure love and trust, not as opposed to the use of cruelty but in relation to its ability to accomplish an outcome. One of its characteristics is that it never forces a result. Rather, it trusts that all things will work out for the good of all and always allows others a choice. There are many examples of this kind of love, Agnes's love for David and her devotion to her father, Mr. Peggotty's faith that he would find and save Emily. Aunt Betsy's faith in both David and Mr. Dick, the doctor's trust in Annie, Annie's deep love of the doctor, and Mr. Dick's pure love that brought the Strongs back together. It was Mr. Peggotty and David's trust in Martha that gave her a chance to rise above her misery and express her own love for Emily, and through that, to build her life anew. Such love is not momentary or dependent on outward appearances, but it runs so deep that it has the power to shape the future. In David Copperfield, the overcrowding, pollution, and disease associated with 19th-century city life figure prominently in the chapters surrounding Martha and Dell. However, the wealth generated by industrialization also contributed to the rise of a professional middle class distinct from both the aristocracy and the working poor. David himself is also a product of the economic changes that took place over the course of the 18th and 19th centuries.